So with uh, spring break coming, I know a lot of you guys are looking at the map, trying to figure out where you're going to go. And I love Google Maps. I love Google Earth. I love to be able to zoom over and see what's going on. And we're actually getting ready to burn the trail this coming week for spring break. We're burning our trail back to Tennessee to see our kids and our two grandchildren. So we're excited about that. So I'm looking at the map. If you guys love maps, well, I love maps. And let's see if, uh, let me get this uh, pulled up here. Do we have an image? Is that it? Oh, there it is. There's our map. That's Salem Springs actually right there. And I remember when we moved here two years ago, we started walking around. We weren't familiar with the territory. And so what I'd like to do is to get us in this mindset of going walking this morning. In order to do so, I want to first of all read the passage, the first verse of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, which says this, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love. That's the opening verse for the next 20 verses we'll be looking at from an aerial shot. We're going to do a big view in just a second. But before we do, I want us to get into the mode of walking. So, Connor, that's our cue. We're going to, I just, uh, Connor, I, I just uh, asked him if he wouldn't mind laying a little bass line for me. Uh, what we're going to do in this passage, it talks about being like dear children and then walking in love. And that immediately brought to my mind the days of me doing youth ministry and working with our children's groups. We had a song called Walking in Love. So if you would, please help me. Please stand. And we're going to do one more song. And the thing about being a dad, I discovered, is when you have little kids, it forces you to do fun little kid songs so you can't really be mature anymore. And now I have grandchildren, so we're going to have some fun. There's some motions. We're going to do a long time with this. We're going to quickly walk through the song. Oh, I'm the one in charge of that. Hang on a second. I've got to get the words up there. Keep forgetting that. Here we go. Walking, walking, walking in love. Goes something like this. Okay, lay a little. Doom, doom. Goes like this. Walking, walking, walking in love walking 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 in love do that with me walking 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 in love walking 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 in love now this next part goes like this you ready it says I can swim I can jump I can run real fast it goes like this I can swim I can jump I can run real fast but I'd rather walk in love I can swim, I can jump, I can run real fast, but I'd rather walk in love. Now this last part is for our folks who like to raise their hands, so here we go. Hey, are you walking? Hey, are you walking in love? Do that again. Hey, are you walking? Hey, are you walking in love? All right, good job. That's all we need. You can, you can have it. Hey, stay standing. Stay standing. Stay standing. We're actually going to go ahead and read through this passage. So I know it's going to be really, uh, we're going to walk through Ephesians, but as you stand, we're going to read through this. I'll read it. You can just uh, put, I wanted to put all of it up there in one screen since we're doing an aerial shot of this. And so this is our big picture. Let me go ahead and read through this as we go through. It goes like this. Classes. It says in verse 1, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a man as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. 
Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, guys. You may be seated. through this and again I'm going to do this a little bit differently instead of verse by verse we're actually going to be kind of walking through the block a couple of times hopefully it'll make more sense as I show you how we're going to do this I want to show you and as I listen to this when Rod first told me about this passage I used my U version on my Bible uh, app on my phone and I'd plug it into my car and so I would listen and just keep listening over and over again to those 20 verses so I'd get more familiar and I started to pick up a pattern as I listened to what was going on and I saw I'm not a math person, but in this case, two and three are the numbers that I'm going to deal with this morning. First, I saw a contrast of two, where he had put two things side by side, like a fork in the road as you're walking along and choosing a path to the right or a fork to the left and choosing a path which way you're going to go. And then the other thing I saw was as you choose one of those paths, you begin to see things along the way that represented what that path was about. Examples of three. And so what I did, I started looking at this, and I decided I would highlight in blue on this aerial map we're going to show you again of the verses 1 through 20, in blue is going to be every place where there was a pattern of two, opposites, contrasting ways, light and dark, awake and asleep, dead and alive. And you'll see the blue, and I put in parentheses two next to it in just a second. And then the other part is in red are, are examples. And the examples come in triplets, come in three forms. And so it usually indicates, just like on the table, we have the bread, the wine, and the light, the candle. So as you have these elements representing some of the things we're even talking about today, it represents this, these are indicators of what you'll see as you're walking down this path, and these are indicators of what you'll see walking down this path. So again, I know this is going to be a busy slide, but I want to use it like an aerial shot, and you'll see the blue and the red as we show it. And it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but as we're looking at this, I'm going to break this down and show you the, the twos and the threes. And imagine, if you would, as we go through a town, when we first came here, we walked through Siloam Springs, for example, we'd walk down a road, and then we'd start seeing things on that road. For example, as you walk through the downtown area, you start to see a pizza shop or an ice cream shop or a coffee shop. And so you start to realize that this is the market area as you're walking through. So as you're walking along, as you choose a path, you'll find there are certain things that become indicators. One thing may not be sufficient enough, but a second thing is good evidence that this might be on the street. And three things kind of drives home that this is what you're going to find on this street. And if there are things that you don't need to be participating in, as Paul is saying, back off of that street and start walking down this street, which has these elements, one, two, and three, along the way. Now, even though that's hard to see, I want to get the idea of walking through a map so here's what we see in the first part, the idea of a fork in the road. As you're looking at those scriptures, we walk through it the first time, you'll find the contrast of two, a fork in the road. And even this picture that I use here, uh, I found an image that had light on one side and kind of a darkness on the right side. So even as you choose and you start walking down a path, you start seeing something. And Paul uses this analogy, these, these contrasting dual types of things where one side is presented and then the other side. So, for example, in verse 8, it talks about darkness and light. That actually kind of shows you the path that you're taking, either darkness or light. In verse 11, we actually see the idea of asleep versus awake. Wake up, O sleeper. So you're in a sleep state and then waking up. And then in verse 14, it talks about being dead and alive. And then twice, in both verses 15 and 17, we find the use of the terms foolish and wise. So again, these opposites. And then in the latter part of the, that passage, we find the idea of don't be drunk on wine, but rather be filled with the Spirit. So again, these contrasting views. And again, a path where you can choose to go down this way or go down that way. So as you're walking along, you see a fork in the road, and you have to make a decision which way you're going to go. Paul is reminding us through a variety of metaphors and analogies of these the split in the road, and you have to make a choice. Now, the second thing he does, and that's what I call the contrast of two, let's look at what we call, well, actually, let me just give one of the examples that I forgot to mention, is that as you're walking down the road, there is this idea of light. He talks about the importance of light, of even we as believers, we are drawn to the light. We're drawn to be like Christ, so as we see the light, we're drawn to it. 
There's a, an American author, her name is Annie Dillard, and I didn't know anything about her until I had an English professor do a talk one time, and I remember he shared about a little story. It was about a moth that was drawn to a flame. And she was sitting there watching this moth, and I, I put this picture of the, the candle wick there because as we are drawn to Christ, our light, so is the moth drawn to this flame. Well, the thing that she noticed about this moth, as it was drawn to the flame, it immediately was, was caught into the wax, the melted wax, and it was suddenly consumed by the fire. And yet, even though it died, the moth kept living in the sense of light because there actually became two wicks, the original flame wick, and then the moth, its body itself, became a wick. And it continued to burn and glowed, and immediately, once it died to itself immediately, everything in the room lit up as Annie was describing the scene. Everything, the colors on the wall, everything lit up, and she could see what was going on because of this moth that suddenly it lost its life, but in the loss of its life, there's this flash of light. And in the same way, we as followers of Christ, as we follow the light, we begin to die to ourselves, and yet we ourselves are no longer living. It is Christ living through us. We become the wick, and his light is shown through others. So even as you're looking for a path, we, as followers, end up becoming a light for other people to know that this is the right path to take, and these are the things that you'll follow along the way. So now the second part of that has to do with the contrast or examples of three. Examples of three. And we can even go back and walk back through here. And again... As we go back through the same path that we just took, as we look at the examples of three, we have a couple of things here. One, the first three that you see on here, the early part of the chapters you're walking through, Paul is describing, okay, if you're going down this dark path, these are the things that you'll see. And he gives three, rounds of three, three different times. Sexual immorality, impurity, and greed. These are the things that you'll see as you're walking down this path. And then he also talks about not just the actions but also the words, the types of words that come out of your mouth. Obscenity, foolish talk, and coarse joking in verse 4. So as he lines those out, he then comes back to and says, not only your lifestyle, the things that you're doing, or actions, but eventually you become people of these things. And so that third one that says, it's a repetition of the first list, immoral, impure, and greedy are the types of people you become. Not just the action you do, but you become those types of individuals. And so he says, there's no place in heaven for these people who are immoral, impure, and greedy. Now we keep walking through that. We see where he says, but instead, take this path instead. Take this path, and these are the things that will be indicators, examples along the way. And he spells those out for us again. For example, on God's path, we see, live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. And then the next one that's on there, it says, uh, Psalms, hymns, and songs. It says, instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs. Very similar to what we're doing this morning, whether the songs that the group led or my silly little song, but doing things that, again, that, that reflect the light and love of Christ through our words and our actions. And then the last one, again, the importance of music, and even in Paul's life, was saying, that last section says, sing, make music from your heart to the Lord, and give thanks. So again, very specific examples as you're walking down that path. So even as we're looking at these, the, the contrast of two, where you're coming to a fork in the road trying to make a decision, and then as you choose that fork and you start walking, Paul reminds us it doesn't take long. For example, as you're walking down a street, and you, you go down this one path that looks kind of dark, there aren't very many lights, and as you see it, you notice that it's very dimly lit, not many lights at all, which is a little bit sketch. So as you're walking along, you start and you notice three things. You see, one, there's a, there's a car with its tires off, that somebody's stolen the cars off the, the tire off this car. <laughs> they stole the car off the tires. The tires are sitting there. The car is gone. They left the tires. Uh, but, you, but you say, man, that doesn't look right. And then you see a, a group of folks kind of huddled in a corner, and they're passing some things, looks like some plastic bags, and you're looking, and they're kind of looking over their shoulder. You're thinking, that doesn't look very uh, safe. And then you keep walking, you see this woman who's standing there, dressed with a red skirt, really high pumps, with you know, really high heels. Uh, if some of you are wearing those this morning, I apologize. But as you're, and, you, 
And you're looking, and, and then you, you're, thinking, you're thinking, this, this has got to be a woman of the night. This is probably the wrong street. So you back, Now, you may have been looking for those things, but, but Paul's saying, back off of that street. Back off and come over here to this street. And you start walking down. You pass the pizza place where the family, there's good lighting going on. You see uh, a, a couple of guys uh, and a girl. They're singing. they got the guitars out. They're raising money to pay for their college tuition. Uh, and, you, and you keep going. And then you see the coffee shop, people sitting around coffee tables talking. And you're thinking, this is the kind of place path and they're examples to show that this is the path that I need to be on so Paul very clearly and very dramatically points out those types of things to help us see what we need to do along the way I want to tell you that as I did the little kids song and I made reference to my grandchildren and some of you are going to have to live through this again because the beginning of the semester uh, last semester back in August it was a Wednesday I just finished two, teaching two of my classes and we knew that our son and daughter-in-law, Taylor and Elizabeth, they were getting ready to have their second child. And Banner is our, our first grandson. He's, he's two years old now. But in August, uh, we're waiting. We knew that September was actually when she was due to have the baby. It was Labor Day, appropriately. Um, so we're thinking, okay, Labor Day, she's going to have the baby. But we get a call on that first Wednesday night in August after my first day of class. My wife and I had just been to Zaxby's. We got a Zaxby's salad, and, uh, and we're sitting there, and, and we get a text from my son Taylor, and it just simply said, hey, we're on our way to the hospital, and he named the town Athens, which surprised me, Athens, Tennessee, because they usually go to the hospital in Chattanooga, which is an hour away from where they live, and this hospital was about 30 minutes away, and we're thinking, why are they going to the hospital now? It's two weeks early. Well, then my wife said, we'll give him a call. So I give him a call, and I, I wait, and Taylor doesn't pick up. He doesn't pick up, and find the, the phone picks up. Well, the phone didn't pick up. He picked up. <laughs> and I hear something, but there's no talking right away, and I'm waiting for an answer. And then Taylor says, Dad, can't talk to you right now. She just had the baby in the car. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Twelve hours away, I'm thinking, is the baby okay? Did he really mean they had the baby in the car or they're in the car getting ready to have the baby at the hospital? So we're texting, we're calling, no answer, nothing's happening. Eventually, my wife says, we're getting on the road right now. Twelve hours, I'm telling you. This is Wednesday night after first day of classes. Twelve hours, she says, we're getting on the road. And I said, okay. So we got on the road, we start driving, and about 30 minutes, we get a text of Elizabeth sitting there at the hospital after she had the baby in the car and the umbilical cords wrapped over her arm and he sent a text saying everything's fine we had the baby five minutes before we got to the hospital and what had happened basically she had banner her first son was a 24-hour labor elia our second one 24-minute labor by the time they get in the car she's feeling the pains by the time they got to the end of the road, and this is the point I want to make out, they came to a fork in the road. And they could either go an hour to Chattanooga or 30 minutes to the small regional hospital. And Elizabeth said, in a lot, much louder voice than I'm saying now, go to the right. Because <laughs> she knew something was up. And before she knew it, she had the baby in the front seat of the car while Taylor's driving. She's even giving him instructions because he missed the turn. <laughs> she delivered the baby. And she actually had the baby in the car, and everything else was fine. But we didn't find that out until nearly an hour or so down the road. And we finally got there the next day, and I have on my phone a picture of Banner, my, my grandson, looking at his brand-new sister, who is actually doing great, and we're looking forward to seeing them. But they had to make a choice. They had to make a choice in the road as they're making that fork. And I want to show you something right now, because of our time and also because of communion. I want to show you something that I actually started doing this uh, about 30 years ago, I saw a deaf friend of mine actually walk through life quickly. He walked through life, and then a couple of years later, I decided to add some sound effects to it. And so what I'd like to do, the first time I did this, I didn't even have children. Now I'm going to walk through this, and every time I've done this, every few years when I pull this old synthesizer background noise out, um, I'm, I'm reminded how quickly, how quickly life goes by. And those of you in my faith meeting calling class, you'll recognize this. I did this for you guys. But I want to do this because, again, as we're walking through Ephesians, as we're walking through life, and even today symbolically as you're walking toward the table, recognizing that you've chosen the right path, that God has provided for us things and elements and even his word as a map to guide us and let us know which path to take along the way. So if you bear with me, I'd like to walk through life. And again, 
uh, from birth to death, and when I finish, when I die, <laughs> I'll be dead up here. Uh, Rod's going to come and lead us in the communion, and then we will continue the walking as we come forward to participate in the communion today. Let's go ahead. Yeah. 